So this is going to be Phil 6? Yep. We think that's right? Yeah. And anything we should be talking about before we begin that? Uh, not that I can think of. I have been trying to record every beep. I've been a little bit more selective of when I have the, the beeper on. So, yeah. Right, well, let's, I would say let's go forward, and then when we get to the end, we can come back and talk about the CLEC 3D and whatever. And, uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, ready for beep one? I'm ready. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. I was, um, and most of them are pretty straightforward this time, I believe. Um, I was on the sofa and had just finished saying the sentence, both of you, to Evestina. At the moment before the beep, I was on the word you and had just looked towards the puppy, Max, who was lying down between us. Visually, I was drawn to him lifting his head up and yawning. So if I'm understanding correctly, you're saying aloud to Evestina, both of you, mm -hmm. and beep comes at the end of that sentence and sort of on the you portion of that sentence? Yep, or just after you. Okay. And, and at the same time, I'm looking at Max. Yep. And, and is that an intention, intentive, attentive looking, or am I, I just, my eyes are aimed at him, I'm seeing him look the set up. Um, I would say it's more that my eyes happen to be aimed at him. I wasn't, um, I was, I wasn't consciously trying to focus on him. We had just been talking on the couch and I had been mostly looking in that direction, looking at Evestina while she's talking to me and looking at Max. Okay. So the fact that Max is lifting his head up is a fact of the universe. At the moment of this beat, Max is living, lifting his head up, but it's not particularly central in my experience. I'm just seeing what Max is doing. I'm not done. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And about the speaking, the both of you, that's allowed. Yep. And, and is there anything, any other aspects of that experience that are? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> This was uh, in the morning, sitting with coffee, <laughs> trying to wake up. Okay. Then uh, I'm good. Anybody else have questions? I think I'm good as well. Number two. Okay. Um, I was hiking with a heavy backpack that contained my pack raft, paddle, and far too much fishing gear and extra clothes. The backpack felt very unbalanced. Um, at the moment before the beep, I was navigating a rocky hiking trail and feeling that the backpack was heavily lopsided. I had just pictured a backpack lopsided on someone's back, which was somehow supposed to represent my backpack on my back. But for some reason, this backpack looked different. It was gray and blue, and it had fluorescent green, although somehow I'm unable to make out the specific parts of the backpack. I feel like these colors originate from a memory of something I had as a young teenager. Without words, I was considering whether to stop and repack some of the contents in, an, in a more balanced manner or just keep going until I get to the end of the trail. Okay, so I think I got some part to that and some not in terms of what was at the moment. So at sure. the moment of the beep, um, what is in your direct experience, Phil? Um, I had just pictured this backpack on this person's back, and, and I guess there are uh, different things. I was navigating the – tra the, the trail was kind of rocky, so – I had to be a little bit careful about where I stepped as not to fall over. Um, and I guess you could sort of say in the back of my head, I had been considering or I was still considering, like, should I just stop and fix this or should I just tough it out until the end of the trail? 
So is that is it correct to you that there's sort of three things going on? I guess so. And so like the the seeing is that was that before the moment of the beep or was that present to you when the beep went off? It was before the moment of the beep. And am I still seeing that? At the moment of the beep? Yeah. So, or, so I think we might have a terminology issue here. Let me see whether I can straighten that up. So the question that Cody is trying to ask is, is this seeing, the inner seeing of the blue and green backpack or whatever it was, is that still in, pre in your experience at the very onset of the beep? Is that caught in flight by the beep? Um, that's a difficult question. It, it could have been. I am not sure, but I know it was right before the beep. So the problem with the, with the locution right before is that you could say that the paleoesthene age was right before the whatever, whatever age right. that could, yeah. that could be billion of year, billions of years. Right. And, and right before it could be in the microsecond at the, up, at the upset of the uptick of the beep or anything in between. Right. Right. I always, I always try to, um, write down what I was experiencing right before the beep, because once the beep starts, I'm experiencing the beep. So, so the moment that we're interested in, if, if this is, if this is, if this is time coming along like this, and this is the beep. Yeah. And, and the beep continues to beep until you push the button. Yeah. The moment that we're interested in is this one that is right here, right one microsecond just before the beep goes up. So we, we don't want your reaction to the beep, but we want to know what's ongoing at, yeah. the, at the caught in flight by the beep sometimes we say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I, would, I would also want to say that sometimes that's a little bit difficult to sort through, and this might be one of those kinds where the... I, I, yeah, I think, um, I think since there were sort of three things going on, I'm, I can't exactly say if I was picturing this backpack, if I was interrupted by the beep while I was picturing this backpack. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe let's start with some of the other parts of of this. And so whether or not the seeing was there, Phil, are any of these more present in your experience at the moment? Uh, I think one of them, the, I think the most present was the uncomfortable feeling of this lopsided backpack. Okay. And so by that uncomfortable feeling, what do you feel? Um, that there is more weight. So that it, first of all, that, that it, it, there's more weight on one side of it. And secondly, that it just, it's on my back going like this. So is that going like uh, left to or left to right? On yeah, your the back? top of the backpack was more. I feel like it was more over here than like as it would normally be here. And it was it was uncomfortable just because there was an uneven distribution of weight, and I guess you could say it was also uncomfortable because I thought it probably looked really silly. Not that the trees care that much, but. And just, I don't know. It, it wasn't as it should be, and it was causing discomfort that I could have stopped and fixed or just kept until the end. So I take you be saying there's something that's both sort of I'm feeling the weight distributed in a way that I'm, I'm feeling it more on this side of my left side than on the right side. Yeah, and it's kind of going know, down my back. I'm thinking that it's, it's difficult to describe, but like there's a, you have a bunch of strap, you have the shoulder straps and then you have another strap that goes across your chest and then you have another strap by your waist. And it was just, I don't know, one strap was pulled, one shoulder strap was pulled shorter than the other. But then when I, uh, if I even them out, then it just, 
it felt like the backpack was even more tilted and it was it was causing frustration so i'm sort of feeling the tilted bag and but i take you to be saying that there's something more to it it's not just that i'm feeling this but that the the appearance of that bag for lack of a better word is somehow present to me is that correct yeah yeah that's why i had been imagining a backpack on somebody's back tilted to the side and when you say the backpack i was imagining was somehow supposed to be my backpack on my back i believe but somehow it it looks it looks very very different and so this is like a and is this a like a i'm seeing this in my imagination or i yeah i'm seeing this in my imagination and that seeing is the you said it was a gray and blue and fluorescent green bag right whereas my bag is just this dark green with a bit of black on it but that gray blue and fluorescent green bag isn't seen like you said there's no I should be saying there's sort of no, it's not a specific scene. This is, I, I, I see the colors or I know the bag to be searching colors, but is that correct? Yeah. I know the bag to be those colors, but as to what parts, what colors matched in what parts, I have no idea. So is it better to say, I know this, like I'm, I'm seeing a bag and I know it to be these colors or I see a, gray and blue and fluorescent green bag or something that maybe that doesn't quite make sense i don't know i um uh it, i'm seeing an object i know it's no i i can't describe it i don't think i can i don't think i can give you any more so let me let me see whether i've got the big picture figured out here so at the moment of the beep, I am experiencing that my backpack is uneven. And that is both a physical experience and somehow uh, it looks uneven. That it might un look un uneven from the standpoint of an external observer. And it looks uneven when I imagine it. Yep. And, I, and when I imagine it, I imagine it with a different color backpack. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can introduce Max if you want. Max is a horror. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's cute. Yeah. He's a the English setter. Mm -hmm. He turned 10 weeks on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think yeah. we have that pretty well figured out. Is that, you got more about that, Katie? No, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good on that. If, if Phil, if, if you're good, if you feel like that, I think, if we're I getting think, it pretty faithfully. Yeah. Okay. And I guess, I, I guess the I other part like is a little bit short, but. Well, the, the other part of it, I guess, is that we're seeing the backpack that I see is my backpack. I know that I know it to be my backpack. But it doesn't look like my backpack. It looks like some strange. It didn't even. It didn't even look like any. It didn't even look like like I can't picture it. Like I just. I have those colors. I know. I see those colors, and I know it's a backpack, and I know it's somehow tilted. I I have a difficult time going beyond that. And what, what about the part of that, is, that you're not sure about whether this is present at the moment of the beep? Is that, is that because of the complexity of this experience or is it because the... the I think it is because of the complexity of this experience. Because I was, I was uncomfortable. Um, the trail was really rocky. Um, I was kind of in a hurry and... Um, and I just, I, I had this image in my mind of that somehow represented this. There was a backpack tilted, had these colors represented my backpack on my back, but looks 
I had like it's only afterwards I realized that it looks nothing like my backpack, and I was I was thinking to myself, why did I imagine this as my backpack? So as as you were imagining it, I I was seeing my backpack. Then later on, I, I realized, oh, that was weird. I was didn't look like my backpack, but right, yeah. But at the moment, it was my. I was just seeing my backpack. Yeah. And I guess we haven't talked about the Rocky Road portion of the. No. Um, <clears throat> I like I had to be. Well, of course, you don't plan. You don't cognitively, consciously plan each step that you take. But I had to. I could. I was limited to walking on certain portions of the trail because of rocks that were sticking out. And, uh, and I was trying to navigate these rocks that were on the trail. And I had a heavy backpack, so if you, if you don't navigate it correctly, you could, you could be thrown off balance quite easily, especially with a lopsided heavy backpack. So I'm going to use a word here. You didn't see this, Phil, but I'm sort of attentively walking. Is that? Uh, yeah. You see that? Yeah. And is that walking, uh, is there anything more to say about that, I guess? Like, you know, do I feel that, like, you know, when I'm taking a step, it's, you know, I'm feeling something in my leg or I'm. No. Anything? No. Anyone have any questions about that, the walking? No, I'm good about that. And there was a, I, a considering repacking my bag. Did we get that already, Phil, with our discussion about like the seeing of it or the feeling no, of it? Or is that something no, separate? That was, um, oh yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, I, it's also very difficult to describe. Um, it was, I, I think I'm kind of at a loss of words here. It was just like a, a feeling of like, it's ongoing feeling of should I just stop and, and uh, get this sorted out or should I just continue on? Like I was un undecided. I, I guess you could say it was, it added to the frustration. So it's sort of a, uh... I, I guess you would use the word considering sort of just like a, an uncertainness, an undecidedness about Undecided. my bag. Yep. Yep. So I'm not too happy with that. Let, let, let me back up. On, let me back up about that. Because there's been several ways, different ways that you were talking about it. One is I was thinking about doing that. I think you said. And one is I felt I was feeling it was. And one was I was undecided. So let's. Does this seem like a cognitively, analytically? cognitive consideration or is it not i i think i had already experienced the cognitive aspect of that consideration and now it was just um a sort of persistence and by persistence you mean that it's ongoing whatever it was that you were doing is yeah continues on yeah it's an ongoing association with the need to either repack my bag or continue on. And, and do those, does it seem like there's two choices? I could repack or I could continue on? Yes. That makes it seem like a sort of like analytical cognitive thing. Yeah. I'm trying to determine whether I should do this or whether I should do that. Yeah. Or I'm not trying to talk you into that or, or it's just some aspect of the of the dis weight distribution that I make makes it a sensation almost rather than a cognition. Uh, yeah, that's sort of. Um, Yeah, it was just this this persistence of like this indecision, a persistent indecision, I guess you could sort of say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, using I think the word thinking was 
not not the best description. Just this na nagging un indecisiveness. Okay. And by and by thinking being incorrect is that I take you to be saying, Phil, it's sort of that's sort of too strong and makes it sort of too discreet. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. I'm not necessarily thinking, be talk, thinking about two options. This is just a, I'm, but somehow I'm. Should I, should I, should I settle this? Should I, it was also kind of like, okay, should I stop and, and, and take a moment and finally decide what I'm going to do so I don't have this nagging indecision anymore? I hope I'm not muddying the waters now, though. No, I mean, I think these types of distinctions are making here pretty fine grain. So we're, that's why we do this over multiple days so we can sort of build the understanding of what, what all mm -hmm. these differences might be. Mm -hmm. So your last statement seemed to double back to where, we, where, we, where you began, was that I was trying to decide whether to stop or keep going so that I could resolve the persistent indecision. That would indicate. Well, now, now I was kind of taught now, now I was just, now I was saying, should I stop and resolve the situation? Whereas earlier I was, I was saying, should I stop and do one of two actions? But now I'm saying maybe, maybe more accurately, it was like, okay, should I just stop and, and figure this out, figure out what I'm going to do? So that way of talking makes it seem like this is a in the analytical realm, in the cognitive realm. Should I stop and rebalance? As opposed to, I'm yeah. just but that, that thought had cr that sort of feeling that that persistence. I, I say it as a persistence because I pretty much went the whole way. <laughs> with this feeling, with this indecision, I ended up just toughing it. Basically, no, I did. I did do a small repack. I did do a small repack. That would be well after the beep. Yes. Yes. So there's a there's a persistent imbalance that's been over the last several minutes. I'm gathering. Oh, yeah. Let's say like. Let's say 10, 15 minutes. Right. And then the question is, is there at this particular moment on top of that persistent physical thing, a consideration of, now should I stop and work this out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had, I had maybe another 20 minutes to go. So Okay. Then I think I'm good. Yep, me too. Okay. Number 3. All right, I was writing a message to my sister in response to her asking me what I'm writing about these days. At the moment before the beep, I had just written the acronym TMS. As I was typing those letters, I was thinking about how I didn't want to write a long message, but if I mentioned TMS, I'd need to explain what transcranial magnetic stimulation is, and in this context, its application for treating depression. I was looking at the letters I had just typed and was thinking, how am I going to explain dot, dot, dot. The word how was, the word how was actively innerly spoken and then am I going to explain seemed more passive or heard and the words seem to overlap and fade. So the the words how am I going to explain are all explicitly words as opposed to just the idea of them? Yes, 
Yes. But there, but how is somehow present in a different way than am I going to explain experientially? Right. It was like, um, it was like I thought, how? And then am I going to explain just sort of came to me. And then uh, the rest didn't even have words. Like, how am I going to explain transcranial magnetic stimulation as a treatment for depression would have been the whole thing. That was the context, or that was what you knew you were, you, you knew you were talking about, but, but that was not yeah. directly present. Because I knew, yeah, exactly. Because I knew what I was talking about. I didn't have to say all of that. Okay. And, uh, and the distinction between how and am I going to explain, you originally said it was, one was spoken and the other was heard. And then you said one seemed to be coming out of me and the other seemed to be coming to me. Is, yeah. Is all well, that, that. The, the, the how was more like I was, like I had, like I had, almost like I had said it out loud. How, and then, and then, I guess maybe somehow it was like it, it triggered those other words to come. Am I, am I going to explain? And I felt like that, that seemed more like hearing my voice than me speaking. And they're all in your voice. It wasn't, it wasn't such a like, okay, here's the word how active. And then here are the other words passive. It was kind of, it just kind of faded into, yeah, it was somehow it felt like a more like a gradual transition than me saying how, and then there, it, like a pause or something. And then am I going to explain? So are these all in your voice? This, this is, yeah. Phil, this yep. is Phil, Phil's voice, not somebody else's voice or not no voice. Yeah. And when you're talking about the overlap or the fading, that is between the how and the am I going to explain, not within the am I going to explain? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So somehow there's a how and a am I going to explain, and these are happening overlappishly and pretty distinctly different experientially, but exactly how to explain which part of these things are overlapped, that, that's something of a challenge. Yeah, yeah. I'm having trouble remembering this experience as I describe it to you now. So I'm, my, my little log here is, is mostly what I'm going on. Okay. And then the other, the other portion of this, I'm seeing the letters TMS. Yeah, I had just I had just typed those letters. And and is that seeing does that mean my eyeballs are aimed at TMS? Or yeah. or do I experience do I actually experience the seeing of TMS? I I would say I experience the seeing of TMS in capital letters as the central thing that I had been thinking about. And I had finally gotten actually to the, to typing those letters. And is the capital letterness an important part of your experience or is that as a matter of the fact of the universe, these letters are in capital letters on my computer screen? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there was somehow an association with capital letters being more important somehow. So now I'm worried that I that I sent us down this road. So what I what I'm trying to get at is does this is the I guess the big picture is is the seeing something which is sort of significantly present in my inner experience. It's not, it's more I, than... I, would, I wouldn't say it was significantly present. I was more 
focused on on whether or not to so if i if i didn't feel if i didn't want to explain what tms is then i would have just erased the sentence and i would have put something about um electrotherapy or something like that and um <clears throat> and it just i guess i had decided that maybe i was going to write an explanation so i had started writing um what was the sentence again oh i don't know what the sentence was but i had just gotten to the word to the to the acronym tms and um as i was writing it i can i well we all know that we can type and think or innerly speak something other than the content of what we're typing and uh and i was just I was just thinking, how am I going to ex how am I going to explain transcranial magnetic stimulation? How am I going to explain TMS in a in a really short, brief way in a couple of sentences? So I, I think I understand that the that the problem that you're trying to solve is how am I going to explain this? And is yeah. that but I guess I haven't yet figured out whether that problem, so to speak, whether that consideration is directly present to you or whether that you've you've been wondering about that. How am I going to explain this? And what and what's present to me is I see TMS and I speak to myself how and hear myself am I going to explain and that mm -hmm. exhausts my experience at the moment even though what I'm what I'm doing is I'm trying to explain how to, how to I'm trying to decide how to explain this to my system or whether to explain it to my system. Right. She had asked me what I've been what I'm writing about and um, that's what I'm writing about but in terms of whether or not I like how much detail I wanted to go into in, in my description was um, was was a factor that was present. And so is is that present in your experience that how much detail do I want to go into? Is that somehow present to me? Right, because I'm wondering how I'm going to how how I could explain TMS in the context of depression. In, in just a sentence or two. So I think I understand the situation. What I haven't yet figured out, and it might not be possible to figure out, I'm, I'd be happy with that too, but is the sentence, how am I going to explain whether that carries the meaning, how am I going to explain TMS in, in a couple of sentences, or whether I am working on, in my conscious experience, this notion of how am I going to explain this a couple of sentences, that's present to me. I was wondering how I'm going to explain this consideration, how I'm going to explain. And at the same time, I am saying or hearing to myself, <clears throat> how am I going to explain? Mm -hmm. And maybe this is one of those things where it's just not possible to separate those things out. I would say it was more like the, the first thing that you said. So there is some consideration of how am I going to explain TMS to my sister in a couple of lines. And well, okay, not exactly how in terms of, of, of what I'm going to write, but whether, whether or not I... I want to. I guess it was com what it, is what it comes down to. Okay. So there's a consideration, which we haven't yet dis discovered how that's going to be, but there's a consideration of whether I would want to explain this to my sister. Yes. And there are the spoken and heard words, how am I going to explain? Yeah. And that's two aspects of... of of both consciously ex experienced experience. Yeah. 
Okay. And, and then, then the, the, the acronym TMS is visually present. Got it. So the, the portion about whether I want to or not, should I do this or not, how is that present to you? Um, just to add to that, like um, as a similar to before, just as just as a feeling, like that's what I, I had kind of started, just like mentioning TMS, just to see if if uh, if I could start and then just keep going with it, or if it was if if it was going to turn into something that I, I couldn't put in a couple of sentences and would just erase it, like I was saying before. So the word feeling is problematic for us because it means so many different things in so many different right, kinds. Right, right. So does this, seem, does, does this seem more like I am considering the possibilities, which puts it into the sort of analytical cognitive realm, or I have started to do this and it just doesn't seem right, in which case it puts it more into the Reaffective reaction. I guess. Um, I guess I would put it in the cognitive and anal analytical realm. Okay. Yeah. So there's some kind of a cognitive analytical consideration of really whether I really want to do this. Yeah. And how is how is this the same or different to? Should I stop and adjust the backpack? Is, is, is this the same kind of a? You know, no, no, that was different. That was like as best I could describe it—a a persistence. Um, because I was, I was in a bit of a, I was in a bit of a hurry, and um, yeah, I, I that one's, it was difficult. So this one, this one about the about the TMS, this seems more cognitive analytical, and the other seems more persistently physical, maybe analytical, but hard to tell. A persistent indecision, okay. a persistent indecisiveness, and nagging persistent indecisiveness. And 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 that seems like a different realm from the consideration of how do I want to, whether I want to explain to you, to you man. Right, yes. Yeah. Okay. And I think I'm good. I yeah. think I'm good as well here. Beep four. Okay. Um, I was walking, I was walking around the house with Max and I was at the side of the house. At the time, just before the beep, I was watching him standing on top of the piled rocks that form the border with the neighbor's house. I was visually observing him standing there with his head down, likely sniffing something. And that's, that's it. And is there any particular part of this Phil that my attention is drawn to or I'm noticing or I'm just sort of my eyeballs are aimed at Max and I'm I'm seeing what my eyeballs get yeah that's pretty much it okay I was yeah he, well I guess I was more or less following him but I had been doing that for the at least half an hour or 45 minutes prior and and um, he hopped up on a rock and I just happened to be looking in his general direction half watching him half staring into space not really processing his behavior in any particular way and is that just to see? I'm, is there is there something about what I see that's sort of not clear or not indeterminate, or just I'm not I'm I'm seeing it and it you know I, I get it, and I'm just not quite paying attention to you know any particular aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
and you mentioned Max, you're kind of watching Max, you know, the context of this is you've been watching Max for a while. Is this seeing at this moment, at the moment of the beep, is that in motion, so to speak? Like, you know, I'm tracking Max and he's moving around or at this moment, am I, is that not quite right? Mm. I keep my eyes on him because I want to make sure he's not chewing anything that he shouldn't or getting into anything that he shouldn't. But at the moment, there was nothing really around. I guess the only thing was that maybe he would jump off the rock and go into the neighbor's yard or something. So I just kind of happened to be watching him. Okay. But I take that yeah. to be sort of the context of the watching, right? That's why you were watching him, but that's yeah. not really directly present to me at the moment of the beeper. Right? No, no. And so in terms of this scene, um, what do you see? Like, you know, the, yeah, what, what do you see? I see him, um, so I don't know, the pile of rocks goes maybe a foot and a half high. I see him standing on the rock. He had been standing there for a couple of moments prior to the beep. Maybe, I don't know, let's say between five and 10 seconds. And I looked down at him and I was looking at him. So you're standing next to Max at the time? Yes, I'm standing next to him. Yeah. Anyone have any other questions? Good. Number five. Okay. This one, this one is a little bit difficult. Um, I had been out. Okay. I think this was in the same, um, the same time I spent with Max outside. I had been outside for some, some time with Max and kept noticing a man at the front of a neighbor's house with what looked like some surveying equipment. At the moment before the beep, I had just glanced over to the yard and saw him for perhaps the third time in the same spot taking a measurement. I innerly said to myself, still there, which overlapped with, what is he? Still there seems condensed for, um, is he still there? And what is he seemed... uh, condensed form of what is he doing both were said with intonation implying both intrigue and slight annoyance still there felt active like i was talking to someone and what is he felt more passive like i was hearing my own voice so that sort of that's sort of similar i didn't realize this but that's sort of similar to the uh how am I, how, and the am I going to explain that we talked about earlier? And by similar, do you mean it seems like it's sort of the same thing? That in in terms, well. Obviously the words are different, but. The, yeah, but in terms of the active passive relationship. So the um, still there was almost like I spoke to somebody who was beside me. And the, uh, what is he, seemed more, more past, more like I heard that, like I heard my voice saying that. And I can, I can remember this one a little more clearly as we speak, so. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm interested in what, whether, so you, about the, the, what is he, we've said that it's like hearing and it's like passive or something. So does yes. this, does this seem like a herd? I, I, I want to make sure I understand what we mean by herd. So, so does this seem like I'm speaking, but passively, or does it seem like I'm actually hearing my voice as if on a recording the way i would remember it i would say it was more like hearing my voice on a recorder so i mean hearing literally it's obviously in my imagination but it's but i mean hearing in the same way as 
in this conversation now, I hear Phil's voice and I speak my voice, and those are two different things. And it's not just that one's active and one's passive, but one is an ear in ear thing, and the other is a mouth thing or whatever. Yeah, um, I I think I would say it was more like hearing it than actually more like hearing it than saying it than um, simply just completely passively hearing it. So you had a beep in the in the if I'm recalling correctly, where in the previous session where where you heard an instrumental portion of a song, I think. Yep. Yep. And what I that was that was that was very much like like hearing a recording, like listening listening to music. Okay. Yeah. And so now I, what I want to know is whether that use of the word hearing. I heard yep. that instrumental stuff is the same or different from the use of the word hearing in what is he? It was different. That was much more passive. Which was much more passive? The hearing the instrumental part of the song. So does that mean that they're both an, an inner auditory phenomenon, but one is more passive? Yes. So we're not backing away from the word hearing in the present. I'm not, I'm not trying to put us on the spot here. I'm just trying to understand what we're talking about. We're not backing away from the, from the what is he as a hearing phenomenon. I, I mean hearing in an auditory sense. But there's apparently a, a continuum of passivity in this. Sometimes it's a totally passive. And sometimes it's sort of passive. But both are hearing. Or we just can't unmuddy this water. I mean, there's no reason. I, 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 sometimes I feel like there's just no, um, there's no vocabulary. Like you either, he, you either hear something or no. So there is no vocabulary. So you're absolutely right about that. Which, yeah. is, which is why we have to fret about everything that we say basically we have to yeah i i just i feel like i'm at a loss because the i it was more like those words came to me than i said those words okay that, that might be a slightly better way of putting it okay i'm yeah i'm 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 really at a loss and but, and, and to put it that way would would seem to be indicating they didn't. They come to me not particularly in an auditory way, but they come to me, and I've used the word hearing to describe this coming to me. This there is an uh, there there is an experience of my own voice. It's like my own. Uh, so it's not just the words, it's Phil speaking these words. Yeah. Okay. But it felt more like me speaking those words came to me rather than I innerly, actively said those words, just like when I'm, uh, I don't know, trying to decide something from a menu that I just looked at or, okay. or doing something more complex. And so I hear my voice speaking those words. That's not what I meant to say. I thought that these words are coming to me might be somewhat less than I hear these words, where hearing implies ear ear type audition, and coming to me could be spoken, but but as if they're being spoken by an. Tomaton or no it was me it was I have a recollection of it, it being my voice making these words 
or some kind of association. Yeah, like, oh, I don't know. Now I feel, I feel like I'm thinking about it too much. Okay. So maybe the, word, maybe the words are coming to me in my voice, but it, it, it somehow feels a bit different than, than hearing those words. Okay. And and I want to I want to emphasize there's there's no reason why it should be one or the other, in the real world, it probably has to be one or the other either either, you know either the sentence that you're the sentence that's going that's ongoing right now you're hearing because I'm speaking, but in the inner inner world, those distinctions are not necessarily nearly as clear. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. So what I'm where, where I'm leaving where I think we're leaving this is we're we're confident that the words still there are different from the words what is he in the sense that still there is pretty clearly an innerly spoken in Phil's voice with Phil driving it yeah and the what is he is in Phil's voice but received rather than committed, and whether it should be said that these words are heard, we're not so sure about. Right, right, yep. And I don't know, I don't know how to separate the fact that these, these words are associated with my voice saying them. There's some kind of vocal quality to it, but somehow they're not being the word heard doesn't there's just something that doesn't feel right about using that as a descriptor for this experience so i i think i think what you said a little bit ago is that we, that we don't have a vocabulary, a vocabulary for these things i think that's exactly right and i think that's why this is a difficult and b interesting because we are yes. we are in the realm of trying to explain a phenomenon that seems pretty clear to Phil, he's not confused about whether these are still there and what is he are different from each other. He's got access to this phenomenon. Nobody else does. This is Phil's private phenomenon. But we haven't yet figured out how to put that into words that make sense in the in the lexicon, in the in the external world. And and we're working at it. And maybe we're going to get better at it. And maybe we're not. Maybe, you know. That's, but that is, you know, maybe maybe if we were like the Eskimos with 13 different words for snow, then it would be obvious. Well, this is snow type four. And everybody <laughs> would know exactly what we were talking about. Yeah. But, uh, but we don't have that. We don't have that shared vocabulary. Right. We have to make do with, with the with the words that exist. And I would imagine some people are better than that than others. And um, I, I try, my, try my best. Well, you, and, and I would say probably nobody is very good at it because very few people actually try, try to do it. Right, and right. That. So I think... It's amazing how these distinctions don't become apparent until you actually contemplate them. I think that's exactly right. I, I, I believe that's exactly right. Uh, you have got to encounter them at some particular moment, and then things that are interesting come to light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're willing to speak in sort of generalities about things, then you can then you can slide by these distinctions and and never and never have to worry about them. Yeah. Yeah. Which of course okay. is what, what I think is interesting. <laughs> um, you're cutting out a little bit. I hope I'm still coming in clear. You've been good. Yeah. Okay. Um, On to number six. Okay. Beep six. It was quite similar to beep one. It was standing. Estina was sitting on the floor with Max. She was holding him and tempting him with his squeaky raccoon toy. I had just finished saying something, and um, by the time I wrote this, I honestly, I'd forgotten what I said. 
And I had just finished saying something and I was staring blankly at Max. Oh, so this is also similar to before. Um, oh wait, the raccoon. At the moment before the beep, I noticed the face of the raccoon toy was directed towards me. It's, um, and its wide eyes caught my attention. You said white eyes, correct, Phil? Oh, sorry, wide. Oh, wide, wide, oh, W-I-D-E? Yeah, correct, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, and by caught my attention, is that to say, like, I'm, this is a seeing sort of a thing, and I'm noticing in particular the wideness of the eyes? I'm noticing the wideness of the eyes, and I'm also noticing that um, the, the raccoon's face is it's like it's looking right at me. I guess maybe I was attributing some sort of anim it's looking at me right now. <laughs> um, some sort of animation to it. And by animation, is that to say there's something lifelike? As if the raccoon is looking at you. Yeah. Is, yeah. A, is, a, is a being looking at you rather than a toy aimed at you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I guess, is there anything more to be said about this, this scene, the raccoon? Uh, no. No. Or the seeing it, or the seeing in general. No. Do I see Evastina and Max and all that too? At the moment of the beep, I'm just seeing this raccoon no, staring. No, my attention was quite focused on the 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 face of the raccoon. Got it. Okay. So is yeah. my experience of the raccoon looking at me, and sort of parenthetically, I could say, well, he's got wide eyes and is aimed at me. Or is my experience of the wide eyes, and sort of parenthetically, I could say, well, the raccoon's sort of looking at me. I would say the first. Just it, um, it's a descriptor of what the raccoon looks like more than me noticing its wide eyes. Its wide eyes were part of its face that were that was that I just ha that I had been looking at, but didn't realize that it was looking at me like okay <laughs> i believe i believe i was looking at it but didn't apprehend that it was the raccoon's face and that it was directed towards me and then the moment before the beep i did apprehend exactly that so i'm i'm making eye contact with this raccoon yeah that seems like a being seems like a sentient being to me I'm making eye contact with this, this raccoon, and then all of a sudden I notice that I'm making eye contact with the face of the raccoon, and it appears like a being looking at me. So that makes it sound like sort of a meta-analysis, meta-observation. Meta Phil is looking at the raccoon, but more, maybe more importantly, Phil is noticing, hey, I'm looking at the raccoon, at the raccoon as if this is a live being. I think that might be overcomplicating it. So it's more, I'm making eye contact with the raccoon. I'm making eye contact with the raccoon, and then I notice that I'm, and then it, then I notice that it, like physically, I'm making eye contact with the raccoon, not paying attention to it. And then as I am making eye contact with the raccoon, I notice that it is the raccoon that I'm making eye contact with. And, and I apprehend a sort of animated quality to it. So the distinction here for me is about um, whether there's a meta that I'm noticing what's going on here, quality to it. So when I when I was using I make an eye contact with the raccoon, I was trying to convey that this was an 
ongoing thing as if the raccoon were alive. Obviously, it's not, but but my experience is of making eye contact with a sentient being who's making eye contact back with back at me, or while my eyes are gazing at this toy, I am noticing. Well, this looks like a real, like real live raccoon who's actually looking back at me. Mm, I would say it's well. I guess it's the the eyes that that brought my attention to it, even though I was looking right at it. And then um, <clears throat> I, I apprehended its face, the face-like quality of the thing that I was looking at, and um, which gave it a sort of property of an, an animated sort of property. So the question is still for me, is this, I'm seeing the raccoon has an animated pro property, or am I noticing the animated quality that happens to be a raccoon? So is, this a, is my experience more about seeing the raccoon, or is it more about the process that I have made this raccoon sort of animated? I would say it was more about seeing the raccoon. Yeah. <laughs> I glance, I'm, I'm looking at it and then all of a sudden, oh, that thing's looking at me, <laughs> kind of. If that, if that helps. So the question is, and maybe it's not possible to answer it, is, am I noticing that thing is looking at me or am I looking at a raccoon that is looking at me? I don't think it's possible to make that distinction as far as I can tell. Okay. Yeah, I know. All right. And I'm good. And I'm good as well. Or well, Phil, is there okay. anything else in this, anything else at the moment of the beep here at beep six? No. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Then I'm good. So the, the one one could who watched who was who was watching this process say, oh, these guys are making a big, really big deal about you know who who really cares about whether something is heard or whether it's just coming at him by passively or who really cares about whether the raccoon is whether whether he's paying attention to a animated raccoon or whether he's paying attention to the animation and maybe there's some logic to that but it it seems like that's sort of at the heart of experiential science which from my point of view that those those things are very different from each other mm -hmm. oh for sure and, and we're and we are trying to sort them out which is a a valuable exercise which and i think your earlier comment about you you really you really can't know the that these problems exist until you try to look at them one beep at a time or one moment at a time. I guess all that. You, really, you also, you don't realize these things about yourself, like the contents of your own, of your own inner experience. Which is also part of what makes the whole process interesting because it becomes, it becomes intensely personal about Phil. Yes. Not not about some guy, but it has to be about Phil, and and then so then we have to disentangle Phil from what Phil is trying to say. <laughs> yeah. And I would I would also say it goes beyond just Phil, and I think where most psychologists fall right is we maybe try to focus on a certain symptom or a construct, right, like depression or. Mm -hmm. inner speaking or things like that right and we transcend that we're not really you know we are looking at phil's experience well this uh, for example um my inability to describe whether or not what i'm the, what i'm innerly speaking whether it's 
active or passive or if I'm hearing it or speaking it and there's there's no fine line I think um, I think it's important in the context of, of people who experience auditory hallucinations for example voice voice hearing is um, it's an important thing to know about I think it's absolutely true and I and I and I have worked with some voice I've worked in the voice hearing kind of a thing and I, and I think I think that that literature it does not carefully make it carefully enough make the distinctions that we're trying to work through here. Mm -hmm. And you would think that that would be central to that, that literature. Mm -hmm. And and I would also say that it's not it's not only personal about film; it's personal about Russ and Cody and Amber too. That that, mm -hmm. that Phil so Phil doesn't have the ability. Well, Russ doesn't have the ability either, and to to help Phil do it. So we're. You know, it's, Right, I wouldn't be able to describe these things halfway, uh, unless unless um, in in other contexts, just um, trying to write it down in more detail, or maybe if I was speaking to other people who weren't as well practiced as you, um, I would have ended up describing something quite different. I think that's I think that's very likely. All of which is to say, should we do this again? Yes, yes. and when is a good question.